Um, great. So welcome, uh, Trevor. Uh, delighted to have you here and look for, looking forward to your presentation. Uh, so for everyone, uh, Trevor is uh, from the University of Falmouth. He's the head of the department, uh, but just because this is what we have been doing so far. I will put in the chat again the 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 main page of this event where you can um, read through and read about the presentations. And also at the bottom, uh, all presenters have uh, a little square there. If you click, you can read their bio and more about them. Uh, so uh, to you, Trevor. Uh, thanks, Abby. That, Yes, and your, your presentation is Actively Analysis and the tangent energy of screen performance. Yeah, and that was a typo. It was supposed to be active analysis, but yes. OK, you know, because I went back <laughs> and read again your submission yeah. because I thought, how cool is that? There must be a twist, but uh, no, yeah. Okay. Typo. Um, and um, uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, some wonderful presentations already. Feeling thoroughly intimidated here. And so I'm just going to rattle through this. I'm going to run long, so you're going to be shouting at me, every, I'm sure, but I've, I've cut some as we've been going this evening. Um, what I would just like to do is say to everyone, I'm, I'm sort of reaching for an idea here, because as I, as I was writing this, as, as often happens, doesn't it? Uh, an idea has occurred to me, which I don't think I've got yet. So I'll be interested in some some feedback on, the, on, on how this has gone later on. So um, active analysis and the tangent en energy of screen performance. Stanislavski's concept of active analysis sees dramatic language as encoded action, just as musical notes record melody, Carnegie 2010. The technique moves the actor from the text to an embodiment in a way that attempts to both be accurate to the written word and intuitive. As such, it puts the actor in touch with the specific thoughts that inspire the specific words they need to speak. Stanislavski and actors are encouraged not to demonstrate or indicate. Active analysis can be a powerful tool for helping the student actor understand how to achieve the embodied iteration of show don't tell whilst not indicating. I want to propose that the rehearsal technique of active analysis is actually the perfect state of being for an actor working on a film set. Sorry, everyone, bear with me, just put a cut in there, so I'm just jumping through my, my text. Uh, in this, the first half of the 21st century, I find myself teaching and working with students who will not, in their careers, work primarily, or even at all in many cases, in the theatre. Most of their work will be for a camera and be experienced by an audience on a screen. Even the way in which that work will be experienced by audiences has changed radically in this century as the once, em once emerging new forms of first cinema and second television have created structures that have then been largely dismantled. The internet age has changed the modes of delivery in the first two decades of this century and artificial intelligence is set, to, set ready to revolutionise everything again in ways that at the time of writing it is impossible to predict. Right now, it doesn't seem needlessly hyperbolic to point out that acting as a human activity might well be superseded in the near future by machines, as predicted by the British playwright Alan Aikborn in his play Comic Potential of 1999. The actoids, as Aikborn had it, may be about to replace us all. It has seemed to me for quite some time that we need to address why we still think of theatre in the way that Baron and Carnicki critique it as the normative institution. Or put another way, what is an actor? What does an actor do? And how does, to borrow a phrase, an actor prepare today and for what? As American actor trainer Lisa Tyler Renard has put it, Today, for many actors, the old world has been swallowed up in new technologies, media and globalisation. Having grown up with TV and the movies, they may have never been in a theatre. Today, knowing what an actor does is as complex as making sense of our new world. There is another level of cultural remove, certainly in UK acting terms, from Stanislavski's Life and Times. The Moscow Art Theatre was a permanent ensemble in a way that existed in other parts of Europe, but did not exist in the same way in the 20th century UK, and is about as remote a possibility in the UK of the 21st century as could be imagined. The permanent company, the comparatively long rehearsal periods, the sense of a civil, single building or organisation being home for an actor for their whole career is anathema to any contemporary actor in the UK. 
This is crucial to our understanding of how the principles behind Stanislavski's system need to be reinterpreted today because we are not working in the same ways that Stanislavski took for granted. What would be different in the system if Stanislavski was working on an act of repairs for publication in 2037? What would Stanislavski say if he were working today sits alongside similar questions like what would Shakespeare be writing if he was alive today? It is, of course, impossible to say with any certainty, but it seems highly unlikely that Shakespeare today will be writing blank verse plays for an open air theatre. Similarly, would Stanislavski make the assumptions he did in the first 40 years of the 20th century if he were working in the first half of the 21st? Active analysis, as with the rest of the system, is conceived for the theatre, and a theatre in the UK terms has never really existed. As explained by Knebel and others, it is intended as a rehearsal technique requiring the actor to explore within a company as part of a rehearsal, leading eventually to a fully embodied live performance. But if the technique requires that actors will work in a theatre environment, then it cannot work in the same way for most, probably all, actors in the UK today. The question therefore becomes, how does an actor need to prepare in the first half of the 21st century? Given the current pace of technological change, that question could itself change again radically and soon. Evie Stemier too has discussed the different demands the practice of self-tape auditioning places on actors today. By definition, the actor will work largely or totally alone to produce the tape that will decide whether they can make progress towards eventually getting a job. If they get it, assuming that that job is screen-based production, the actor will then work alone to prepare for however many days or weeks they will be on the set. They may never meet the actors they will work with until the day or even minute that they shoot the scene. The notion of preparation and rehearsal is therefore totally different from Stanislavski's or Knebel's. As long ago as 1998, the actor Gary Oldman described this as kitchen work, because at that time at least, that is where he did his preparatory work alone in his kitchen. However, for Knebel, there can be no belief in fictional possibilities without the visceral knowledge acquired through the rehearsal process. Again, that's from Konecki 2023. This is the central paradox of how the technique of active analysis can be relevant in the 21st century when the kind of rehearsal process that Knebel views as essential cannot and does not happen in the vast majority of production scenarios, at least in the UK. The question becomes, how does the actor achieve the same result as Knebel envisioned in the circumstances of a permanent ensemble working in the medium of live theatre in the 20th century when working in the fractured practice of screen based media of the 21st century and beyond? One lens through which we can view this is belief. Sharon Konecki has explored the apparent difference in how Stanislavski and Knebel view the importance of belief, in turn translated from the Russian. In the scene for the actor, the extent to which the belief is even possible being a major question in its own right. Uh, this is a Stanislavski quote from uh, Sharon Konecki. You can't create what you can't believe, he said. In his eyes, theatrical art at its best activates the innately human ability to believe that dramatic fictions could be possible. And again, Stanislavski himself, everything on stage must instill belief in the possibility that it could exist in life as actual feelings and sensations. I am going to suggest that the most, for most 21st century applications of this, we need to substitute on stage with on set. That set may be a real location, a facsimile on a soundstage or a backlot or a green screen studio. It may even be a theatrical stage with the event being filmed. Unlike a play, the work will be played in short sections and recorded to be assembled into a whole piece later by editors. The, the belief that the actor needs to work with is therefore much more fragmented and transitory. A scene may take less than an hour to create and record, or may take weeks. Scenes will usually be worked on and recorded out of sequence, with the schedule rarely, if ever, based on the creative process of the actors. What the 21st century actor needs is a way of creating the belief in a fragmented way, in short bursts. Bella Merlin identifies three categories of truth described by Stanislavski in relation to acting. They are one, make believe truth, which draws on cliches and shortcuts. Two, actual fact, which is life as we know it. Three, scenic truth, which is actual fact distilled into creative form. Scenic truth is a useful phrase when looking at how acting works in this new world. The belief only needs to serve the actor one scene at a time. 
in filming terms, that could be reduced to one take at a time. In The Multiple Determinants of Television Acting, Roberta Pearson quotes an interview with Michael Okuda. I might be getting that pronunciation wrong, I've never met him. Graphics designer on Star Trek The Next Generation. He describes how the actor Patrick Stewart, playing Captain Jean-Luc Picard, would grapple with this problem of belief whilst acting in the science fiction genre. Patrick Stewart has on a couple of occasions said, I need to do this. I want to make sure that I'm doing this in a believable way. I remember one specific time I said, well, just punch a few buttons here and there. And Patrick said, no, no, I want to know what this does do. And fortunately, on that particular occasion, it was something where I'd actually thought about how you would do this. So I said, OK, you tap this and then you do this to activate the system and then you enter the, enter the coordinates in this. For Stuart, it makes no difference whether the computer he is operating has a real world function or not. He still needs to have a belief in his approach to it within the scenic truth. What is different, or rather one crucial thing that is different, is this all happens as part of the process of going from first moments of exploration to a finished product of a scene or moment, and the actor moves on to the next scene or moment, rather than each moment being worked through systematically, no pun intended, in sequence over a period of weeks or months until a whole series of moments and scenes can be recreated anew over multiple re-performances of the whole piece. Although this may seem obvious as a way of describing the difference between stage and screen practice, I argue this is vital to our understanding of how acting processes may work when theatre is no longer the normative and the camera is. That in turn means the principles of active analysis need to be separated from the process that Knebel assumes, an ensemble rehearsing for a play. For Knebel and Stanislavski, active analysis is a means to an end, a process to be worked through over an extended period of time to get an actor to a point where they can perform a play in a theatre. What I want to propose is that the way the principles of an active analysis could work is both rehearsal and performance simultaneously. In other words, what the actor is doing on set is making the kind of discoveries that Knebel and Stanislavski envisage happening privately in a rehearsal room, publicly, in front of a camera, so they can be recorded and assembled into a performance later. This is what the American actor Meryl Streep has labelled the tangent energy, something that happens that may be unintended and is often repeat unrepeatable, something that can be seen as a mistake and this is Meryl Streep in 1998. That's the only thing worth looking at, is when nobody expects to happen in a scene. In a play, when somebody drops something or forgets a line suddenly, all the attention, it all becomes alive and electric and it feels real. So the unexplained, the tangent energy, the spontaneous is what you dream of and wish for and hope appears. When Streep says that the only thing worth looking at, she is referring to film performance. For the camera, what matters most to Streep is a real reaction. Loaded phrase, I know. In a live performance, what Streep described would most likely be a unique event witnessed by only one audience. For recorded performance, if included in the final edit, that moment will be the performance that every audience sees. Active analysis of theatre rehearsal technique allows the actor to explore that and many other moments of revelation as they encounter the living experience of their character in action so that they can construct the inner life of that character in order to perform the play for multiple audiences. However, Sorry, Trevor, three minutes, please. Thank the you. techniques of active analysis help the actor, by definition, to be in a state of discovery that can allow them to be open to the tangent energy by which I mean more than the kind of mistake that spe Streep specifically indicates here. And I'm quite sure that Streep means the same. The mistake simply being the, the phenomenon for a general audience. It is the moment of authenticity that matters to the film actor. Nicole Kidman has spoken about this aspect of film acting. For her, it is the way a film process works and delineates it is a way a film process works and delineates what her job is and how it relates to the directors. Kidman identifies that a, fil a film is a director's medium, but not in the sense that the actor is irrelevant. Kidman's point is that the actor's responsibility is to be alive to the possibilities of the moment as the scene or take happens. This is in an extension, in a way, as Meisner would have pointed out, acting truthfully 
uh, sorry, living truthfully under imaginary circumstances. Kidman sees her role as to do exactly that and let the performance be constructed later by the director and the editor. That means, as Kidman sees it, that the actor needs to be in a constant state of new discovery. In other words, active analysis. In this way, the whole process of filming could be viewed as a series of etudes. Last paragraph. Kidman frames it this way. I bring my emotions and my ideas, but then I'm in your world, the director, and I want to help you create your world. Kidman enters the work with the aim of being fully present and to allow the scene or moment to affect her, to leave herself open to the tangent energy. That is her collaborative contribution as an artist. Stanislavski urges the actor to infuse the whole scene with their imagination to transform the theatrical space for the audience. Kidman points out that in film, the actor can only infuse the moment because the whole, whole piece will be assembled later by usually someone else, the director. I tell my students that they can be both actor and director, but that is another story. Thank you. Bang on time. And um, let's move on to...